Hello. This is a presentation that will explain to you how to use Cartoon Network Simulator. Um, we'll cover the basic installation, give you a few basics about how to use the simulation, and then show you how to connect it to a Finch robot. Let's start with the installation. Cartoon Network will run on any type of computer that has a uh, Windows, Macintosh operating system, or Linux. The main requirement, though, is you do need to make sure that you have Java installed on the computer that you want to use. To get started, you need to download the Cartoon Network jar file. That's the single uh, package file that contains the entire simulation. And you can get that from GitHub. When you go to GitHub to the Cartoon Network project, you'll see Cartoon Network.jar. You click on it, and it will ask you what you want to do with it. You'll say that you want to download it, save the file, and from there you will be able to open the file. And you should see something that looks like this. And there you go. Let's talk about how to operate the, uh, the simulation. Cartoon Network works with a mode-based system. So what that means is that you type a letter or use a menu command to enter a specific mode. And from there, every mouse click has a new function. So for example, let's go to add mode. And now that we're in add mode, and the simulator tells us up here on the left that we're in add mode, every mouse click adds a neuron. Go back and open the menu by clicking add. We can enter excite mode, and every mouse click that we do excites a neuron. We can go back to the menu and go to move mode, and now mouse clicks move neurons. And now, if we switch back to exciting, we can activate a simple neural circuit. It's fun and it's easy. You'll notice on the menu system that there are little letters in parentheses that tells you the shortcut that you can use on the keyboard to access the same mode. So for example, D will access delete mode, R accesses rotate mode, G accesses grow, S shrink, X for excite. And a really important one is you can change the transmitter type with W, and you can make a neuron release GABA instead of glutamate. In that case, you'll see that the neuron becomes marked with a red dot, and the transmitter releases uh, is red, and that will cause an inhibitory effect on its partners. Let's talk about how to connect the uh, Cartoon Network to a Finch robot. So this is a Finch. Uh, they're cheap little USB robots sold by Burn Grade Technologies. They are pretty sturdy. They're made for use with um, grade school kids. Um, and they come with a very long 30-foot USB cord. What you want to do is plug in your Finch. And when you do, you'll see that the nose will begin to throb. Then from Cartoon Network, you're going to want to connect your Finch. You can do that by typing this letter C or by using the menu system and using the connect command. Cartoon Network will think about that for a moment, and if it succeeds, you'll see that the nose stops, the nose lights turn off, and that it now says Finch, with an exclamation mark, in the upper left-hand corner. Now, first, nothing much will happen, uh, but now what we can do is we can connect um, the neurons in your simulation to inputs and outputs on the Finch. So, for example, let's click O for outputs. We're going to click on a neuron, and the outputs that we have are to make the left wheel go forward, the left wheel go backwards, the right wheel go forward, the right wheel go backwards, to make a buzzing noise, to turn on its red nose light, its blue nose light, or its green nose light. Let's do um, red. And now if we excite this neuron by clicking into X note mode, the more we excite it, the more the finch turns red on his nose. Let's uh, get another motor neuron here, and we'll do outputs and we'll make this one buzz. And when we hit excite, now the neuron, if we excite both, we'll get a red nose and some buzzing. And we can also get inputs from the finch. Uh, we're gonna type I to hit input mode, and we click on a neuron. And the inputs are left hit, which is a proximity sensor on the left-hand side. You don't have to fully touch it, but as long as you get pretty close, it'll start to go. Right hit, which is on the right-hand side left light, how much light is uh, it's sensing on its left-hand side, 
the right light sensor, and the temperature sensor. Let's do the left hit, and I'm going to move this neuron in place. And now whenever I touch it, it will start to release transmitter that will activate the motor neurons that create a buzzing noise and a red light. So we have a simple reflex circuit. Um, the inputs for temperature and for light need some calibration because every room is a little bit different in terms of how bright it is and how warm it is. So if we make a neuron temperature sensitive, for example, you might see that it starts to become active immediately. Um, now you'll notice it will also tell you the current temperature that the finch is reading. In my case, it's 24.58 Celsius. Now what we can do is go to the menu system and set our temperature threshold. And we can set the threshold for activity in that sensor to be just a little bit above whatever your room temperature happens to be. So since it's 24.58, I'm going to scroll down here and find uh, 24.6. And I went ahead, okay. Now that the threshold is a little bit over top of the room temperature, you'll see that that neuron starts to become silent. Uh, and now if I breathe on the finch and use some hot air from, I should be able to activate that temperature sensor neuron. Uh, the light sensors work in a very similar way. If we switch this from temperature sensing to light, you'll see that it's getting a certain light level. Currently it's reading a level of what's called 68. If I cover it up, it's going to turn off, but that will activate the hit sensor. And I also have a light threshold that I can do. Since my room light was around 68, I might want to set it a little bit above that or um, move it to a slightly darker room. Uh, so that's almost it. One thing you will find is every once in a while the finch can freeze uh, or lock up. When that happens, uh, what you want to do is close the simulator, unplug the USB cord from the finch, replug the USB cord from the finch, and reopen the simulator. And unfortunately, you will lose your work when you do that. Uh, it just seems to happen from time to time, and I haven't been able to work out why, um, but it's pretty easy to get back started. So that is how to use the Cartoon Network. Hope you enjoy.